The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 1st fabulous Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, We've got that covered, too. You can always let your fingers do the walk, and you can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just please, in that subject heading, put radio show question, and I'll be happy to get to that. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, like Ruby did, you can just send me a ping at any time. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous, fun day Friday. Of course, this is Jobs Friday as well. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow up 242 points, printing at 24,658. S&P, that's a 1% to the upside. S&P slightly over 1% to the upside. That's 30 points, 27.35. NASDAQ 100 up 1 in 6 tenths percent. Russell is up 16 points. That's 1%. Semis are up 2%, 28 buckaroonies. Now, what the uh, semis did... As we came to the close of the month yesterday, they closed above their all-time high. They gave a signal of one huge breakout of a really long-term consolidation pattern. So we'll go check in on that. Spot volatility next off about $2, down 12%. You know what happens when you finish a, a day somewhere south of minus 10%. Becomes an initiation move signal out here. That's with regard to the S&P 500. Of course, you have to be aware of or be aware of where resistance is. So uh, remind me, we'll take a look at that. Gold off five bucks, no big deal. Silver back uh, one penny, no big deal. Lights we crude off 68 cents out there. 30-year uh, Treasury, that is uh, moving south by about a half a percent as we speak right now. That's headed into the 143-ish area, or should. But let's go take a look at what you, the listeners, the viewers, want to look at. And the first request comes from uh, Ken. Is this Ken? Um, I'm not sure which Ken this is, but it doesn't really matter. It is Ken who is asking for an entry into CTL. So if we take a look at CTL, let's do it using, uh, let's start off with uh, Stevie's really set of favorite tools out here. And uh, because this is, uh, I want to take a look at one of my sets of tools. It's a pattern associated with tops and bottoms. Period. End of story. If you're a person looking for tops and bottoms of significance, then you've tuned into the right place. And you're taking a look at the right screen out here. Price moving higher. It's okay. This has made a significant top. As we know, we're going to go try to find significant support. That's your question. Looking for an entry in CTL. It's not today. That is for sure. At least it is not as of 110 in the afternoon. This thing moves higher, does with less relative energy. The bears show up, and they have to. Both bulls and bears, their responsibility is to paint signals for us. If you do not know your Japanese candlestick signals, and you're trying to be a pattern recognition trader, then, then do whatever it is that you need to do to learn the language of the markets to in order in order to be because markets will I promise you one thing markets will continue to move higher 
until the bears show up. And the bears show up, they have to paint a signal candle. In this case, that's what you saw in uh, the uh, whatever this equity is, CTL out here. And then we get price closing below Stevie's red line. Just getting the signal, in this case here, was not enough. You must close below Stevie's red line. End of story. If you don't, it's just something retracing back to support. And we'll go and we'll take a look at that and prove that point as well. But here, this equity on May 23rd said, okay, I'm done. I can't hold support any longer, and now I'm headed lower. Now, this is trading below another level of support, a swing point from May the 8th out here. Um, you know, it's below a, a really current swing point from just a few days ago on the 29th. And so price is either forming an A to B equals CD to the downside, or at a minimum, Ken, it's headed for the price area, or should head for the price area, the low of April the 19th. That specific price out here. Now, we're not looking at market profiles right now. This here, that little red dash line, that is a Tom DeMarc setup trend line. And that low is 1723. That becomes a target. Your question was looking for an entry. Watch 1723 as a target level. Just for the heck of it, let me put this on a weekly time frame, see if there's anything else out here. 1712, it's weekly oscillator unchanged line. And Ken, I'm going to ask, why are you chasing this equity here? It looks like, if anything, it's an accumulation. That's the best case scenario out here as we just tuned in to the uh, weekly time frame chart. But I'm sure you have good reason. Remember, I asked that question because I'm looking at this chart for literally two seconds. But when I see something like that, you need to see a nice bottom for me on a weekly time frame. And I didn't see that either in one quick second. Now, if we take a look at CTL, let's just look at the volume as it's trading below swing point areas. This one here, the trading session, as we mentioned, May 29th, about 12 million shares, you're at 7 million shares. So, so this is moving lower with volume out here. And in this case, your target would automatically be the swing point from March 23rd, and that's in that 1548 type area out here if we look at the uh, weekly time frame can it gives you a, a potential area target area price area 1690 and 1461 would be on the uh week uh, the monthly time frame but here's what you need to know today it's moving lower with volume accelerating it's not today it's likely not monday or tuesday or wednesday of next week not that i can see the future because i can't it's got a ways to go before it gets to the next support level. So I hope that that helps you out. And keep your uh, keep your powder dry on that one. And thanks for writing in. The uh, next question came from uh, James, JJ. And uh, James, hi, Steve. Where do you think the energy sector is headed short to medium term? So I believe you would be talking about the XLE as the energy sector. It could be the XOP. So it could be a lot of things, but let's just go look at the energy sector via the S&P 500. And at this stage, if I look at the daily time frame chart here, this looks like it's headed to 77.46 as its next move. That is Stevie's red line on the daily time frame. But we cannot stop there. We'll go take a look at what the weekly time frame says. And uh, well, how about that? Right down to support, 7403. This is a very key area. Now, it's trading at 7647. Support has held. Steve Bojo, TFN. Good morning. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the path of least resistance under Trading Newsletters. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the energy sector for the S&P 500, the XLE. This is a weekly time frame chart, and the question was, where is price headed to? Now, this put in a, a wonderful topping pattern signal. Uh, did this uh, last week. Uh, but remember, we talked about Stevie's red line, or certainly I speak about it to you as a extraordinary level of support or resistance. Resistance when price is under it, support when price is above it. Well, on a weekly time frame basis, look what price did this week. Came right down, touched it, little trampoline effect, it's headed lower. So this very significant topping pattern, much like we took a look at in CTL, I think it was, uh, you have to be paying attention to Stevie's red line. I don't care what type of topping signal you get out here. You need confirmation because otherwise it's nothing more than a retracement back to a level of support. That's what the energy sector did. It did on the weekly basis. That's one with the most uh, bearish of patterns out here. So it uh, looks to me like it wants to head higher. That's the weekly. Well, if we go over, we take a look at our friends, the TAS market profiles. What we're going to see on a weekly basis is a brand new profile form, bullish in structure. So prices fall into support on a weekly time frame of Stevie's red line. You won't see that on this chart, but now that you've seen it, you know support is held. This says price is headed to 77.97. You also happen to be now inside a brand new daily profile This formed. I say brand new. It formed yesterday. It's also a bullish structure. You're back inside. As long as price stays above 75.96, JJ, this wants to head to 78.84. So now we have 77.97, 78.84, kind of within a buck. It looks to me like that is where the energy sector wants to head to. Now, the weekly or the monthly chart, I should say, the very right-hand panel, that has the most bearish of boxes, the way that it's structured, and that the center line is closer to the top than the bottom. 81.17 would be its price target. First, you've got to get above the top of the daily and the weekly before that becomes your price target. So I hope that helps you out. Let's stay along the energy lines because Ruby asked if we could go take a look at um, the uh, gasoline contract, the futures contract. And we're taking a look at the 60 to 40 daily and weekly set of time frames out here that each show their different respective market profiles. This is the July contract. No, oh, yeah, yeah, this is the uh, this is the July contract. That's what. Uh, and if we take a look at the 60-minute time frame chart right now, uh, Ruby, this is above resistance, which was at 214.79. 
If we look at the 240 minute chart, price, and now this 240 minute candle has not completed. Okay, doesn't complete until two o'clock. So you have another 40 minutes, 39 minutes and uh, 11 seconds uh, to be exact or something along those lines. And uh, this says that price could easily now that if it closes above 214 says, OK, you head to the 217 area in the case of the daily. Now, this is interesting because a daily profile that formed formed today and it's really it has a bearish meaning from the standpoint that the profile formed above price. However, it is a profile that formed above a prior profile. So its meaning is like uh, confused out here. We don't like being confused. So we're simply going to have to now 220 would be resistance. That's what that is at least telling you right now. On a 60-minute basis, you've cleared resistance. Says you go to the next level. We'll use the four-hour chart as that next level. As long as it stays above 214, you're heading to the 217-ish area out there. So, uh, Ruby, I hope that helps you out with whichever trade it is that you are in there for the gasoline futures contract. Let's go uh, take a look at a question here from John. John says, uh, uh, Hershey's, I think it's Hershey's, HSY, crossed my red line. If time uh, is NL, or where's N NWL? Well, we're going to make time for you. Let's go take a look at Hershey's. I think it's Hershey's, H-S-Y. Even if it's not, we're going to call it Hershey's. Uh, my chart here doesn't populate what the... Uh, so it, it, it crossed, let's say, on a daily time frame. Okay, and uh, John, but what it hasn't done is cross it on a weekly time frame. And so from a weekly standpoint or even a daily standpoint, you need to see this. I don't know what your time frame is on the trade, you need to see this close above the red line value. That's 92.92, because at this stage here, the intermediate term time frame is saying, okay, I still want lower price. That's what it's saying. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame chart. Remember, I don't know what the time frame it is that you're taking a look at trading this. And on the daily time frame, no, it is not above Stevie's red line. Now, maybe you and I took a look at it a few days back or something, but the uh, 90.43 would be that level. So it's actually fallen below Stevie's red line. So the daily time frame, I'm assuming that my chart is picking up price correctly. Let me just make sure because, you know, I, know it'll, I do not want to give bad information. And every now and then there will be a delay between one set of tools and the next. No, it looks like we're okay. 90, 20, and 90, 20. Yeah. So, John, in the case of uh, Hershey's, HSY, um, you know, it's held support. That was looking at those market profiles, held one version of support, but it's below resistance. There's no buy signal inside of Hershey's on a daily or a weekly. And I don't see anything on the monthly just visually looking at it. So let's go take a look at NWL out there. Uh, I don't know what NWL is, but we're going to find out here momentarily. I like what I first saw, but I want to put this on to who am, I, who am I speaking to out here. Newell Brands. OK, so below uh, daily, below weekly profiles, below monthly profiles. So we better find a really great bottoming pattern when we pull over this other set of charts out here. And voila, we actually do see that it is trying to bottom. It is trying, but it has not. And why hasn't it? You do not have any kind of bullish reversal signal, at least not just yet. Therefore, um, this thing can continue to move lower. Move lower to where? Let's put out the monthly time frame chart. Well, jeez, the monthly time frame chart, you really don't get back into anything until you get to the week of October 1st, 2011, John. That's between 1598 at the high and 1087. And this thing is at 23 bucks. So it looks like Newell Brands still has further to run to the downside. It will at least say that until we see or you see at least a bullish reversal candle. It's not there today. It could be by the end of the day. It could turn into a hammer candle, but it's not as we see it right now. So we're going to go with the call. Newell Brands, NWL, wants to move lower out there. I see Mike K inside the den uh, wants to get a reading on C-R-O-N, Coronas. I'm hoping that's what it is. It's not. It's Kronos Corp. But, you know, it is summer. It is summer. And there's nothing like a corona on the beach 
in the summertime out there, some some summertime. But let's go take a look at uh, CRON for uh, Mike K in the uh, den out here. And at this stage, all I see is just kind of consolidation chugging sideways in between about 550 and maybe uh, what's the exact price here to the upside right now. I'm taking a look at about 685. That's what I see when I take a look at this chart. If we go take a look at our other set of tools out here, our market profiles, um, do I see anything else? You know, Mark, what I would say, I don't know if you're long this, you're looking to get long this. See how that weekly bottom of the box, which was a bullish structured box, price got below it. And now this week, including last week, the week before, it tests that area and rejects it. It just looks like dead money to me. Maybe it doesn't head much lower. Maybe it's just under some kind of accumulation out here. Um, but I don't see a reason to, uh, to to buy it. I hope that helps you out. Kronos Group, C-R-O-N. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. The Dow's up 250, S&P 32. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com welcome back uh, folks let's go out to philadelphia and speak with uh, john john thanks for calling Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Steve, I'm uh, Steve. I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure. My pleasure. Summertime. Uh, Steve, I, I wanted to ask like you, you, uh, you do such thorough work on giving higher projections for the indices. wanted to focus in, if you could, please, on the Dow. And um, 
we know the Dow is lagging. The NASDAQ names are leading, you know, the new, the new economy leading the way higher. Um, and we also know that uh, the Dow Jones pullback into those March-April lows uh, held support nicely. But the Dow really hasn't gotten going yet. And I'm wondering if the Dow is, is destined to uh, surge higher and significantly higher, I'm wondering if you've gone through the exercise and looked at the individual Dow names. And as you and I both know, there's only 10 or 12 Dow names that really drove the Dow the past couple of years anyway, you know, the likes of Boeing, 3M, Goldman Sachs, on and on. I'm wondering if you've gone through the exercise of looking at those high price names and and convinced yourself that either those individual chart names are in position or are not in the position to drive the Dow dramatically higher. Have have you gone through that exercise at all? I, I have not, and 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 thank you for even bringing that fact up because it's so important. And the reason why I say that is is yesterday um, I was considering for newsletter subscribers uh, taking a, a trade in the mining sector, and so I sent out my newsletter and I said, but you know before we do that, I'm going to go look at each individual name in essence that makes up the uh, GDX. Now there's a few international symbols inside the GDX that I don't have the access to. So I had to skip over there in order to get a feel for what's going on. And then, of course, just like you really mentioned out there, in the GDX case, the top five stocks are like 40%. And inside the uh, Dow, I'm not sure what the top 10 stocks represent, but it's probably like 40 or 50%. I have not done that work, um, but it is worth uh, doing. Um, I think, now, the weighting that I have here is probably off just a tad. The top five I have are Boeing, Goldman Sachs, 3M, United Healthcare, and Apple. And then the next five are Home Depot, McDonald's, IBM, Caterpillar, and Travelers. Now, some may have shifted here because I don't know when I last updated this. I'm going to guess it was within the last within the last month for sure. I just don't know if things have shifted. If they have, it's really not by that much. Boeing. Um, you know, being the top weighted index out here, made a high with 5 million shares, and that was tested with 6.7 million shares. Even though price is back underneath it, you know, it's trying to push into that level with uh, some volume behind it. On a weekly basis, we're still inside that swing point. That's a key level. That key swing point, which was February 26, had 33 million shares, and last week you were in with 23 million shares. So light. It's why price is trading below its uh, weekly profile level out here. Um, so it, I don't see this as a failure because you're still trading inside the weekly swing point. And just out of curiosity, no idea what it did on a monthly basis, but we'll find out. That monthly swing had 116 million, and last month it was 85 million shares. So it's lost a little bit of enthusiasm. It's got support at 317. It's got resistance at 356. That's what I see, you know, when taking a look at at uh, at the Dow equity positions. We won't do that during this entire segment here. Have you? Let me ask you the question. Have you done uh, done that as well? And if so, what are your findings at this stage? What is what have you what you know, what's your analysis if you've done you some know, of that? I, you and I have spoken in the past about Marty Armstrong's uh, yearly reversals for the Dow Jones and the yearly reversal numbers that he, he's had in print for just years was 18, 350, then 23,000, then 40,000. Yes. And when we got over 18, 350, you know, it was tough to open your mind up to the possibility that you blow up to 23,000 or higher. But, of course, we did. And then, uh, you know, we can go through the exercise. There were 12 names that accounted for more than 80% of the Dow Point move sure. up to that, uh, that January high. And if we're going to go dramatically higher from here still and fulfill Armstrong's, you know, somewhere in time reach those higher uh, reversal marks, it, it's got to happen or it's got to occur with, you know, some big names having big runs. And uh, as I look at the individual names, I'm, um, you know, I didn't do it in any detail, but I looked at the, sure. the, 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 the 
top 12 highest priced names. And I can't open my mind up to envision, you know, a blast off move again. Uh, yeah. And hence my question to you. No, so I, I went through the exercise and was yes. unable is the yeah. bottom line. And so good, good point. One of the other things Marty would also be, would be taking a look at and would be concerned uh, right now at uh, one thirty in the afternoon would be the mere fact that the Dow is trading at 24.655 and means it's also trading below the December 30th close. Um, and it's really that it just it just talks about the consolidation that is still going on inside of the Dow. And the Dow, we kind of use the Dow as as uh, is kind of like the trophy out there where the big money, the big dollars uh, typically are moving into it. They're not moving into the Dow, but they certainly have the big money. The big capital flows have absolutely moved over into the Russell 2000. I mean, it is broken out in every major currency. And so when I think about that, so even though I didn't do the work, but in thinking about this for myself and subscribers, um, you know, I'm saying to myself, okay, this is where money's flowing. It's a pretty good um, indication of the health of the market, uh, at least, at, you know, to me, because you've got, instead of we're just looking at 30 stocks, you know, you've got 2,000 stocks out there. Uh, so we have money flowing there. We have money flowing into the NASDAQ. Um, uh, and the NASDAQ today, you know, has just simply evaporated the island top that was out there. in the NDX 100, the NASDAQ composite, by trading into it. And I always like to, you know, say there's nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. And that's what we have as we speak right now. So I'll do some of that work uh, over the weekend. And, uh, you know, if you if you can call back in next week, Monday, Tuesday, or what have you, um, you know, or I'll just cover it Monday or Tuesday uh, after I've done that work and to see if I've been able to identify anything. I, I think that the most the most important thing that I've identified with regard to the Dow is that uh, when I take a look at how it's trading in all major currencies there, the money is not flowing into the Dow. I don't know what that means, because just simply money is flowing into other areas out here. Uh, Steve, thanks so much for those thoughts. I want to uh, leave uh, and thank you with one parting question. Actually, it's a request, and that is assume, well, the NASDAQ Composite and the uh, NASDAQ 100 are both within 1% of the March 13th highs. And with the, uh, the oomph that we've had today, I'm just going to assume myself that we're going to get up there and hit those numbers again. Um, uh, so uh, time will tell, of course. I'll touch I on that when we come back to you, please. You know, we're, we're, we're going to hard break. Just hold on and, and I'll grab your question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. TV. That's TFNN.com. Then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, John, uh, if you're still on the line, we, you, were, you were discussing the NDX 100, and, and we got cut off by the break. But please, please uh, uh, tell me how I can help you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, my, my request to you personally is this. Assuming the NASDAQ 100 and the composite reach uh, higher highs in the coming weeks, if you would um, share with us, your audience, your interpretation of the price relative strength divergence that we'll likely see, assuming that occurs. Uh, I'd be very, uh, very interested in having you share with us in real time your observation about that feature and what the implication might be, at least as you see it. So that's my request, and I uh, I thank Perfect. you in advance. Okay, I'll do that. I'm going to first go to another caller out there. We've got two on the line, but I will get to that and answer that question. So good question. Thanks for asking, and uh, uh, we will review that. So let's go out to, let me see, who was in uh, line here first? It looks like it was um, Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing great. Uh, about a week ago, you were talking about the U.S. dollar, yes. and you were looking at it on a longer-term monthly basis. And you yes, said sir. if it closes above a certain point, it would confirm uh, like a longer-term bottom. And I uh, saw Tuesday yes. we bounced up to 95, and we're looks like we're pulling back a little bit today. Um, what do you what do you think? Do you think um, that we've achieved that? And um, well, let me let me tell you what the number was. What it now, we, you know, when when we looked at it, it would be slightly different, I think, than where it ended the month yesterday. The number was ninety three dollars and ninety two cents. Okay. We closed at ninety three dollars and ninety six cents. Uh, look, I'd like to say that's a close above. Technically, it's a close above. There was not with conviction. You know, four pennies. Uh, you know, so. So I don't. So that what that says to me, Mike, is we have to wait to see how June plays out. Okay. Um, at that stage, it had traded up towards a high. So I don't know when we were looking at it at 94.97. If we saw that kind of close, then yes, um, because if if we're and what we're looking at, folks, is we're looking at a monthly time frame chart for the U.S. dollar index. So I've got the continuous contract up in order so I can get all the proper detail. We can see the price oscillator is basically right at zero. And when when the price oscillator gets down towards zero, you anticipate that price and Stevie's red line are going to catch up to each other. Well, that is, in fact, what took place last month. What you look for, a bullish test says you close above Stevie's red line. Four pennies, folks, is not cutting it for me. Mike, it's just not, I, to me, it's not conclusive. 
So I won't give you a, a, a hey, I won't give you, oh, technically because it did, you know, it means it's moving higher. Um, so it, the way I look at it, it closed basically right on Stevie's red line. So it's still neutral. Now, if we continues to close to trade above that level, well, then, and as each day goes, then Mike, yeah, then it says that the uh, U.S. dollar index is done with its move, headed lower. See, it gave that same top. John asked the question about the uh, Nasdaq, and he asked about the pattern where price movement higher, doing less relative energy. Mm -hmm. When the U.S. dollar gave its signal on a monthly basis, it was making that exact same pattern out here. And then all yeah. we really had to do was follow Stevie's red line. Well, price, in essence, did what it was supposed to do by moving lower. And then all of a sudden, it's that price oscillator that kicks in that we have to wait for and take a look at that test. So the, the shorter answer is I don't, it's neutral right now. Okay. Okay. Is there all anything right. else? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, no. no. What, what were you planning on doing with that information? Well, I, you know, since you brought other things to our attention, like with gold, about how gold trades in other currencies, which is a very important thing sure. that, you know, you've, you've taught us recently. Yes. Uh, you know, the dollar is one of the things I look at uh, before, you know, I would put on a long position for gold. Okay. If you go back historically, you take a look at when gold is moving higher, there are plenty of periods where gold and the dollar move higher together. Yeah. Those periods are when gold is breaking out in all currencies. And that's really what you want to see. It tells you that the intrinsic value or whatever it is you're looking at, that buyers are there in every currency. They see it being able to move higher. So don't just use, hey, if the U.S. dollar index, just because, let's say we did get that conviction move, I wouldn't then just assume that gold is not going to move higher right. for that for just that one reason. Okay? All right. Okay. Hey, thanks for calling. That was uh, great to hear from you and a great question. Let's see if we still have Garo on the line. Let's go out to California. Garo, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. And how are you today? I'm very good. How about you, sir? Doing uh, very good. So uh, CBR Energy, I believe, is the, uh, is the equity that you want to take a look at. And yes. if so, tell me, uh, I see that you've got a, a cross, a bearish cross of the 5 and 21. Um, so had you been trading, that took place, looks like, maybe yesterday? Or, or today no, I'm was waiting. the final? I'm waiting for this. I'm waiting. Uh, I think the bottom is hit, I think, uh, on, a, uh, on a 120 minute. Uh, but uh, uh, the only thing that it worries me is that the weekly chart is a little bit overbought. Uh, the, the, that is the only thing that it worries me. That uh, I haven't bought it yet. I'm just waiting for this to turn. And uh, the 120 minutes, as I said, is already turned. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the the weekly chart, sure. I don't like it. Even though it's not bad, but it's uh, it's overbought to me. It okay. looks like to me. Sure. So. Think? Well, so I'm going to look at the weekly chart then, uh, because uh, if that's a concern to you, then, then that should be a concern to, to all of us out here. And so CBI was moving higher, doing it with less relative energy, but there still has not been a bearish reversal signal. Nonetheless, on a weekly basis, if you were to have asked me last week where would support be, we would say on this chart it would be Stevie's red line, the oscillator yes. on change line. That level is 39.39. It's been tested. It's been rejected out here. Um, you know, so support has held. You're leaning towards where you believe this has made a bottom. Then what I would share with you, for me, one of my confirmations that this was just nothing more than a retracement in a bull market for this equity is closing above yesterday's high. Many years ago, I created a tool. I haven't really talked about it much uh, here, but it's one of my Rhodes Momentum Indicator signals. And in bull markets, what you'll see if we take a look at this chart, you see all these little red boxes on the way up out here. It tells you that in this equity, um, it's like an EKG. It's like it's like running a race out there. And in this case here, this thing, ever since the uh, trading session of March 29th, this was on a marathon. This never needed to stop to uh, re-energize to get gas. The first time that it got that re-energized, kind of like my EKG system of the market, was actually yesterday. And where we have this little green U-box uptrend. And if the way that I trade that system 
is you have to get a close above yesterday's high. Now, I don't know how that works with regard to anything inside uh, the, the tools that you have, but I would say, okay, this thing would have uh, formed a, could have formed a bottom with a close above yesterday's high. We're going into a break. You're welcome to stay on for the last two-minute yes. uh, segment, yes. and I can answer more for you as yes. well. This is Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back with Gar. We're taking a look at CBR Energy. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then and head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back. Uh, Garo, can I ask you a question here? And it's with regard to CVR Energy. Um, do you believe that it is directionally correlated to light sweet crude? And would, no. would, no, not at all. So, so if I not were to. Not, I can't. Uh, the, the reason I'm telling you, no, there are three others. Symbols, I'm going to give it to you. You write it down and you look at it in the future. And okay. you'll see the movements of five day moving average respect to 21 day okay. the five day respect one one of them is bk david king got it the the other one is pbf paul boy frank righty and the last one is hfc it is henry frank charlie perfect just okay. look, look at these three charts and then you see the movements of five day and the 21 day. Okay. 
I'll do that. I'll do that. Yes. Um, but, yeah. So, but, so, so that's good because I, I, I didn't know if it did, then I would have shared with you that it looks like uh, Lightspeed Crude actually wants to move lower. So, to the extent that, that this that's not going to impact this, then then let's just say at this stage here. Now, there's some significant resistance in this, and that's going to be the high of of last week, last month out here. Yes. And that is a that is a big old shooting star. But um, they either work or they don't. And right now, this month, prices are moving higher. That hasn't worked. So it, it does look like it is trying to form a bottom. I would use as a close above yesterday as one additional signal to anything else that you use. If it doesn't close above that, then you don't have that confirmation. Absolutely, you're right. On a 21 day, it's not finished yet. You see, today it hit the first candle, hit the dot today yes. after 21 day. Uh, I mean, 120 day. I'm so sorry. 120. On, on a, Got it. Yeah. But still, the five-day moving average is below the 21-day and that. the 50-day. You see, until do. that five-day does not cross the 21-day and does not cross that 50-day, is no good. It's Sounds no good. good. From the hey. moment that that five-day crosses the 21 and 50-day, nothing can stop this chart any longer. Hey. It, hey, will, Carl, it will we, shoot to the moon. Sure. Hey, have a great weekend. Thanks for calling. Thank you, everybody Thank you. Thank you. You bet. We'll see you on Monday, folks. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters